This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Out and About on Think Tech Live streaming network series broadcast from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza in the core of downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Winston Welch, and delighted you're joining us today where we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and are not connected with any organization. That said, joining me in the studio again today is David Tasaka, and we're going to continue to talk about David's upcoming books and life enhancement series focusing on our health, wealth, love, and resulting happiness. And so with that, I'd like to welcome David to the show today. Thank you. Thank you, Winston. I uh, really appreciated you being on the show last time. We absolutely ran out of time, and there's more to come than this one because th there's just too many. Th th this topic was so wide-ranging because it touches on such fundamental aspect of our lives, which are our health, our wealth, and uh, our love life. Yes. So um, the first book that you have coming out, this is going to be an, an e-book series, right? Right. And is it, is it going to be released on Amazon, or how will people access Amazon? That? It'll be on Kindle. On Kindle, okay. Yeah. And how will how would people uh, access this book? Just to get that out there right in advance. So um, we're going to have a um, website created, okay. and um, it'll probably be under my name, David Tasaka. Yeah, DavidTasaka.com. Okay. And that will be the portal for all of the projects. Okay, and you, and your first title coming out is called Fat Games in a Thin World. Right. And we were talking about this last time and um, how the reason for uh, well, what we see as an epidemic really in, I say, is it, would you call it weight control issues or um, body consciousness issues? Or how, how do you describe what's going on in our, in our country today? I think we have a complex issue of using and abusing food because we have to eat. All other addictive substances are optional. Mm -hmm. You don't have to tote, you don't have to use the needle, you don't have to do any, but you have to continue to eat unless in the old days they had a thing called the breatharian that lived on air. Oh, yes. <laughs> breatharians, yeah, yes. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot of those around. No, I think. <laughs> So, so uh, apart from people that are the breatharians and able to live on that, we're facing something that is our, as you've said, is um, that you're doing food or that your um, that your 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 substance of abuse could be termed right. as food. It's, food becomes a way of coping with life, either for what you get or what you are not getting. So. When people don't get what they say they want, food may be a compensatory system that they use and abuse to cope. So in our society, and I, I, when I was, I was uh, curious, because so many of us um, fight the battle of the bulge, and it's creeping up over the years. I, I, you know, I look at old movies or old TV shows, and I think people probably, they were thinner back in the, the 50s, 60s, 70s. It wasn't just Hollywood. Um, we have certainly a lot of uh, fat discrimination in America today. Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of fat actors, newscasters um, out there. But has indeed, is, is our problem really increasing as a society? And if so, what are the causes of that and how does that relate to us individually? Well, there are many causes for the growth of the overweight population. One of them is that people don't cook that much now. Mm. They'd rather go to fast food fast and easy and cheap and big quantity. Mm -hmm. If you listen to locals here and they're describing where to go to eat, one of the terms that comes up is good and plenty and cheap. Good and plenty and cheap. Right, yeah. and that's why buffets here are so popular. Mm. Oh, so it, when we're fighting this, this battle of the buffet, um, <laughs> as it were, because we have and, and the food also is very denatured. Like you say, people aren't cooking. You go to the store, you want something easy, but, but anything basically on the middle of the aisles of the supermarket <laughs> is just prepackaged, GMO. A lot of it's just crap. It's just, just sort of useless calories. How do we, how do we even begin to approach this uh, modification of our lifestyle? Is it, is it that we approach it 
first on a, a physical level or on an emotional level or I think it has to begin in the home and because we have such a high percentage of dual working parents who have snacks for the kids when they come home they and they probably are not cooking from scratch like a healthy meal with fresh vegetables fresh everything I think it's society as a whole due to a lot of factors one of them here in Hawaii the cost of living is astronomical yes it is and so that that leads into a, another topic that you have which is is which is about uh, how do we um, be frugal without being uh, what's the word that you use? Without sacrifice. Without sacrifice, which seems really hard because I was just reading in the newspaper uh, that a third of people here are spending more than half their income yes. on rent. Yes. So you're spending all this money on rent. You you might be living in one of these new, um, what are they calling them, giant homes or, mm -hmm. or something where even on my street there's 16 bedrooms in this home and they have interior hallways where they mm -hmm. lock off and mm -hmm. you know the landlord's probably making 1500 bucks per room and mm -hmm. these people are working probably at minimum wage mm -hmm. and they have a tiny hot plate or maybe just a microwave mm -hmm. how can they begin to um, to reconcile this need to eat healthily with this super high cost of living well it's all interconnected here in Hawaii we have a lot of problems because you have a low earnings ratio to high cost of living. And my passion is to help people to become homeowners because that's the only way that you can cap rent increases. Mm -hmm. You become the owner. And so I assume that, you're, that you address this very well in your books that are coming out, but how can someone become a homeowner when you're making, um, you know, it's something like 40% of the population here works for minimum wage. Of mm -hmm. course, probably people have more than one job to make up for that. They might have two jobs or even three. Well, my friend Abe Lee, who has been in real estate for over 40 years, mm -hmm. he's a uh, realtor, he's the, uh, has a realty school. Abe Lee Realty, yes, yes. Yes, and now it's called uh, Century 21 I Properties. Okay. And Abe just came out with his first book, and soon to come out second book. His first book is How to Become a First-Time Homeowner. And one of the statistics he quotes is that in Honolulu or on Oahu, there are 27,000 people who could qualify to buy a home but never apply. Oh, interesting. And there are 13,000 more that could buy a home if they cleaned up their debt. So we're talking about 40,000 people, when and if they are motivated, they could become homeowners. So if they clean up their debt. Yes. So cleaning up their debt, that's a tough one because people are living hand to mouth here. So I imagine that. I think I've read somewhere else too. We're always at the at the top or the bottom of socioeconomic yes. indicators here, aren't we? Yeah. We're like the happiest people and the healthiest people, but we also have a, a large percentage of uh, uh, people living in multiple uh, multiple mm. people living in one room or an amount of people living in a space. How do we um, how do we even begin to to save for a house when we're when we're usually people who are living at the edge, paycheck to paycheck have generated or have embraced a lifestyle they actually may not be able to afford. They're eating out a lot. They may have a very expensive automobile that they are leasing or bought over seven years mm -hmm. with a big down payment. It's all part of the American dream. You can fake it till you make it look, I'm driving a $50,000 SUV, I'm living in Kakako luxury condo, but don't ask me about my financial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I remember listening to a one seminar recently where people said that, uh, I think it was Louise Hayes, she said they would rather talk about their, their sex lives than their finances, and that people get very angry when you bring up their finances. It is, and it is a very, very sensitive area. Why is that? It's because of uh, the shame factor. Okay. 
If you are an alcoholic or drug addict, you can say, hi, my name is David, I'm an alcoholic. Oh, welcome. Hi, David. Yeah, <laughs> but if I say, hi, I'm David, I have $50,000 in credit card debt, there is almost a disdain. How did that happen? You must be stupid. You must be a spendthrift. You don't know how to handle money. But the truth is, people do not know how to handle money. <laughs> Right. Because if, if I were to ask you, Winston, how, who taught you how to handle money? What would your reply be? Um, that's a really good question because, uh, you know, my, both my parents were very, um, and still are very tight, uh, lipped about how their finances are and mm -hmm. how they control their mm -hmm. finances. But I do remember that my grandfather, uh, who was, you know, had, had a great influence on me, said, it doesn't quite matter how much money you make you always seem to spend a little bit more yeah and I think little things like that they they get in your mind and they stick in your mind mm -hmm. so you think so that becomes your uh, your truism uh, but but I've known other people they were able to <laughs> go to college get it paid mm -hmm. get graduate school paid mm -hmm. they've been able to buy a house they can save they save a lot of money Why do you think say it again why do you think those those people were they smarter I don't think they're smarter, but they know something or they have different habits that, that produce different results. Right. I think it's a combination of things. One of them is that they think differently about money. Rather than using money for what I call fluff stuff, mm -hmm. meaning going out to eat and drink and charging it and always falling behind, their particular thing is Someday I'm going to make it and all this will go away. And someday never come. And there's a startling statistic that the majority of Americans will show up at retirement with almost no saving. So if they had a medical emergency, the car breaks down, the house needs repair or something, veterinary bill, their dog gets sick, they don't have the money. And, uh, you posted something like that, I think, just very recently about that the, the the huge majority of people don't have, can't even come up with 500 bucks. That's right. The emergency fund has been something that has been supported by almost every financial plan. Yes. You know, Lou, uh, the Dave Ramsey, Susie and Orman, Susie Orman, all of that. That's their primary platform. You have to have three to six months of, of your income set aside for emergency, because if you don't, you'll you could tumble big time. And it, well, it seems completely reasonable. Just like we're living on an island here, mm -hmm. and we should have a stockpile of food and water and uh, medicines just in case we're hit by an earthquake or a tsunami or whatever it is. You see, still Puerto Rico, three months after the earthquake, yeah. they still don't have electricity on that island. Uh, so it just makes sense that you would plan in advance, but why is it then that, that people don't even have this basic $500 which... Because money for many people is not a logical system. Why is that? Because they come from the I, I win, I want it now. I want it now. <laughs> right, I win, but I exactly, win. I lose. <laughs> <laughs> because they're unwilling to sacrifice present consumption mm -hmm. for future well-being. They want instant gratification right now. I think that speaks also just in our society in general then, yes. that has told us if you want it, buy it. And we will, fight, we will, we will finance anyone. Figure out, we'll, you come in and we'll figure out the way for you to walk away with whatever it is you want to buy. Well, there's a new trend in Japan which is startling. It's called the parasite singles. Have you ever heard of that term? It sounds like they live at home with their parents forever. It used to be common for men that they would live at home because it, until they could get on their feet. But now Japan is experiencing a critical experience in society because you have all these women who have are educated for the first time. They have this big educated female populations who are working 
and earn their own money. But they have this trend where they begin to mooch off their parents, live at home, don't pay rent, don't pay utilities. And these are possibly the groups of girls that you see at Palm Boulevard, Boulevard at Alamona Center, shopping in cocktail dresses. Mm -hmm. And they're in usually groups of three to six, and the makeup perfect and everything, all yep. the right bags. Yep. And the uh, Japanese government is so confused by all of this, they actually have the lowest birth rate of any country in the world. It, it's, it, so so our, our overconsumption and instant gratification and yes. uh, need to, I don't know, whether it's show off or just buy right now, I, I think maybe we're, our primary function in society sometimes is to be consumers more than yeah, anything else. And that is supported by the marketer. It, it's, it's supported by everything that we see. It's yeah, it, absolutely it, commercial driven. And the Except classic TikTok. thing yes. is on smartphone. Right, right. The iPhone 10 just came out, the Samsung Note 8, you know, it's brand new, less than a month out. They're already talking about the iPhone 11. Right, and if you don't have it, then you're less worthy than you're right. something to you're be. You're not in. You're not. You're something to be ashamed of because you don't have the phone that opens up when you look at it with your face. You're right. Uh, it's it's really tough. So so this epidemic is not just in the United States. It's no. spread into the, the cons sort of consuming nations of the world yes. that we live to to consume, and a lot of it needless. And I think Hawaii is very vulnerable to this because we have a culture that really is loving to children, mm -hmm. the ohana, and parents don't want their kids to be, to do without. Well, I, and I can understand that, but uh, to what detriment? And I think we'll pick this up when we come back from a break. Uh, we are gonna take a short break. I'm Winston Welch. This is Out and About on Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series. We're talking with David Tasaka and his upcoming uh, books and life enhancement series focusing on our health, wealth, and happiness. We'll be back in a minute or so. My grandmother, what big eyes you have, she said. All the better to see you with my dear. That's the wolf. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the starting line. Push. Uh, when this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Oh, hi guys. It's RV Kelly. I'm your host of Out of the Comfort Zone, where I find cool people with cool solutions to problems that all of us face. Now, the thing is, we're really cool. And I only invite really cool people, but the thing is, I think you're kind of cool too, so I think you should come and watch. That Thursdays at 11 a.m. here on OC16 Television with Think Tech Hawaii. I'm R.B. Kelly, host of Out of the Comfort Zone, and I will see you next Thursday. Hello, and we're back live. I'm Winston Welton. This is Out and About on Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series, talking with David Tasaka on his upcoming book series, of life enhancements in our health, wealth, and happiness, and his first book will be Fat Games in a Thin World. We were talking about the societal epidemic of uh, not only just being overweight, but over debted, over, um, we're just consuming too much, mm -hmm. and it's, it's to our, to the point where it's, a, it's, it's, it's abuse at, at some point. But how do we determine that abuse? How do we, how do we even begin to, to A, recognize these habits or patterns and then do something about it because they're so deeply ingrained? Um, it's a very difficult situation because it has been around for a while and it's blooming big time now. If you look at kids, you'll see three-year-olds with a smartphone and an iPad. And if they don't have it, they're deprived. You're a bad parent if you don't provide the learning tool. And when you look at it, a lot of people eat out. That's why there's so many restaurants. You have high-end grocery stores that charge maybe 40% more than the normal grocery store. For me, I found that 
it has to be a conscious decision to be fiscally responsible. And when that kicks in, or what I call clicks in, then it opens up a whole spectrum of a new life in these areas. And do you think that the fiscal responsibility uh, precedes that for even being your healthy weight? Usually people gain weight, and this is my take on it, because of what people are or are not getting in life. So if a person doesn't have a relationship and they want one, they don't get one, they cope through doing food, doing drugs, whatever, doing alcohol. Or it could be what they are getting, which is criticism, discrimination. So they get beat up and the substances become a way of coping and easing the pain and stuff. But that leads then to discrimination that they would get for being overweight. It's a snowball effect. Okay, so when you say we get clicking in, for being financially responsible, what does that mean? Let's say, let's make the math easy and say I, I make a hundred dollars a month. How, what does that mean that I, sh I when I sh when I click to be financially responsible? I would say that my take on saving money is number one. I call myself the frugal guru. Guru. Yes. Never pay retail for anything. Okay, and how do we avoid doing that? There is a free newspaper every week called Midweek. So for food, yes, you can look in there for all the sales. Some of the sales are significant savings because they're lost leaders. Yeah. The supermarket or store is actually losing money yeah. to bring you in. So the 20-pound the, the bag of rice for $5. Right. Yeah, because they're going to sell you a can of soup for 4 Yeah, right. Oh, okay. And especially during the holidays, which we're doing the show now, people go in debt because they want to sustain a culture of giving that they cannot afford. Mm -hmm. And once you set the snowball rolling, I call it the one-upsmanship gifting. You gave me a dollar gift, I have to give you two dollars. Then I give you four dollars. And all of a sudden, distant friends, you're giving 20 to $30 gifts, which means that you're giving family and close friends 100 200 $500 gifts. Well, and I, I know even being here in Hawaii, and we want to send something to the mainland, just sending that, that medium rate postage box is, is about 20 bucks now for the flat rate yes. postage box. And you can get a, a jug of Mac nuts in there, but that's about it. So you're spending 15 for the Mac nuts and 20 for the postage. And one thing that I've started, which has been for me very rewarding, is what I call gratitude luncheon. So my friends, rather than giving them a physical gift, I invite them to go to lunch with me. And I have a term, my presence is my present. I like that. So gratitude luncheon. Yeah. Okay. And people just appreciate that because they're going to get a lot of gifts. They're going to have all the mech nuts and tech toys. But your time is your most precious gift. My presence is my present. So maybe for those people who are still looking for a holiday gift, maybe this is your time to go out and write a card that you make yourself yeah. and say, I will take you out to lunch and just have and, some quality time with I've you. And I've done this for people that I've had issues with to kind of thank them for helping me grow. I've done it with family, which has really been amazing because I get a chance to talk out some issues that we could never talk in a family situation. Mm -hmm. And so if there were one thing I would say that could help people, it would be be grateful and show your gratitude in a non-material way. Be grateful and show your gratitude in a non-material way. So some of the suggestions, never pay retail, mm -hmm. give a gift of your presence. Mm -hmm. Do you give any uh, physical gifts? I do, but they're all probably 30 to 60% off list. Okay, and are they things that are for just practical for people? Usually very practical gifts. Mm -hmm. I gave one of my friends who does 
the tech systems for my project. And I had bought one. It's a noise canceling headphone, probably made in China. Of course. That has thousands of positive reviews. I think it's the number one selling headphone on Amazon. Bose? <clears throat> no. Bose is a, probably American name. This is, um, I won't give the brand, but when I loaned it to my friend, the tech genius, yes. he put it on. His face just was so joyful. And I said, I'll wait till the thing drops again. Because it's usually about $80. Yep. It dropped to $35. OK, so again, a, an example where you combined uh, giving a gift uh, with but a physical gift in this case, I'm sure you give them your presence as exactly. well. But exactly. But this is a special thank you. Yes. Uh, so we so don't pay retail. Give your gift of time. What other suggestions you have for people to be financially responsible? How do we? How do? What else can we do to? I would say they need to have a budget. A budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any templates for making a budget? Oh, lots of them. Just go on the internet. Just go on the internet and and Google budget sheet. Are, are financial savvy classes taught in the schools? Very, uh, very little. Do parents teach their kids about money? Very little. So basically people are on their own in this country. It's a self-learning process because when you learn it on your own, you got it. And so this is something you've obviously done yourself. You, you were a heavy person at one time, mm -hmm. physically. You lost the weight and have kept it off for decades. Mm -hmm. Were you ever in debt as well? I wasn't in debt, but when I first moved out from home, yes. I was able to survive and thrive on meals that were a dollar each. So 21 meals for $21. OK, so you, were, you, were, you had the frugal part down from the beginning. Yes, and out of necessity. Out of, out of necessity, yes. And probably you didn't have a credit card either. Well, I had some, but I was afraid to use it. Okay. And uh, just as an aside, I learned the major lesson was when I married a woman who said she was going to gift me with $2 million. Did she? It was all bogus. Oh, it but was. Because I wanted to believe it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she was smarter in manipulating than I was. So Santa Claus wasn't coming to town. Okay. But the lessons I learned from that was that money isn't love, love isn't money. And and also, yes, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an important lesson to learn. And I think also in our disappointments, sometimes our, the we get the sweetest lessons in life, exactly. ultimately. And so uh, how about savings and, and other spending? How do we, how do we determine what kind of car to buy, or how do we give ourselves there, some savings when we can't even afford rent? There are resources because of the internet. You can get all the support you need if you are willing to look for it. So this is the classic example of when the student is ready, ready, the teacher will, will appear. appear. Right. So for someone who's struggling with with weight or with uh, with debt, mm -hmm. which is uh, you know crippling in our society, with total lack of savings, mm -hmm. um, living hand to mouth, uh, you say maybe uh, just start poking around. Maybe go to the bookstore uh, mm -hmm. or even go to the Goodwill and and pick up books on this. Buying in thrift shop is very in vogue now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially I, the right thrift shops. <laughs> I, there's a wonderful. Uh, uh, one called Book Off in mm -hmm. um, it's in the old Daya in Don Quixote and yes. they have books that are a dollar yeah. and I'm thinking you could buy the same book at Costco new uh, for I don't know eighteen twenty five dollars yeah. a, a novel if you're a novel reader big thick book so you can buy them there at four buck and the same thing at the Goodwill or yes. the Salvation Army yeah. or any other thrift store so I'm a big believer in that as well and for Aloha shirts too. Um, there, I don't know. There's something nice about getting some one that's already been broken in a little bit. <laughs> so, Aloha shirts now run about eighty-five dollars. It's crazy. Even it at is. the Goodwill, they're ten bucks or yeah. eight bucks. So, being more frugal, being aware of all of this stuff, just uplifting your consciousness in general, and saying, if I have a problem, I'm willing to look at it head on and say, there's an opportunity here for me to be happier, healthier and um, maybe find some love.
um, yeah. or develop our love. And that's a, a, another one of your important <laughs> topics is, <laughs> is uh, it, it was um, looking for love in all the right, right places, places, which yeah. is another, again, this is, our time was evaporated <laughs> immediately but the love topic of course is very important very. and all of these issues are interconnected with our sense of self-worth mm -hmm. and our ability and desire to um, to grow as human beings and to have the happiest life possible so I hope that you will come back and join me again you. with uh, that topic and as these intertwine more and more there's just a lot of grist for the mill here <laughs> and I really appreciate you coming down here so today I have been talking with uh, David Tasaka, and he is at davidtasaka.com. He's coming out with his life enhancement series focusing on our health, wealth, love, and resulting happiness with his first book, Fat Games in a Thin World. So with that, uh, we are out of time, and I have to wrap it up. This is Winston Welch with uh, Out and About on Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series, and uh, we are here every other week. I would like to thank our production uh, uh, staff here, broadcast engineer Ian Davidson, technical producer uh, Ray Sengeling, and our floor manager Robert McLean, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer at ThinkTech, who puts it all together. Please, in the spirit of giving, give to ThinkTech Hawaii. Uh, you can find links on the website. We will see you here next time. So until then, have happy holidays, and we will see you later. Aloha.